Hi everybody, I'm Bill Whittle and this is The Firewall. A few days ago, we rather quietly passed a milestone, it was a big one, because for the first time since the 1870s, that would be during the administration of President Ulysses S. Grant, the United States is no longer the world's largest economy. Hold on to your hats, America, reports Brett Ahrens of Market Watch in his online article, and throw away that big fat styrofoam finger while you're at it. Now look, I don't know anything about Brett Ahrens' politics, but throwing away that big fat styrofoam finger, the red, white, and blue one that says we're number one, well, that's a long-held wish of the progressive left. It's so gauche, you see, it's so unspeakably vulgar, this Philistine business of having pride in yourself. This news about us taking second place economically to China is not a bug for the left, it's a feature. They hate this country. Collectivists like our president, let's say, have always hated capitalism, always hated individuality, always hated the idea that more work leads to more rewards. In other words, always hated everything that America has traditionally stood for. You don't believe me? Just before he was elected, Barack Obama famously bragged that he and the progressive movement would fundamentally transform the United States of America. Is that something you'd want to do to something or someone you love? Fundamentally transform it? Would that be the first promise you made to a new bride you claim to adore? Would it be that you can't wait to just fundamentally transform her? Progressives are happy we fall into second. It reduces global inequality. They'll be happier yet when we fall into third or 10th or 20th, the way our education system did when they got their hands on that. Now, China, needless to say, has a little more than four times the population of the United States, so surely we should be satisfied with that, right? That one quarter of China's population, America, produces just slightly less than they do? No, damn it, no. We should not be satisfied. First place is not a statistic. First place is an attitude. First place is an identity. First place is destiny. And the instant you become willing to come in second in anything you care about, you're going to find that second place is a sliding slope to nowhere, and that's not where you're going to remain second. That China is growing at an incredible pace is self-evident. Now, a lot of that is not something we can do anything about, but a lot of it is something we can do something about, but we won't. A significant portion of China's tech industry is, how should I put this delicately, um, stolen from Western research and development. We don't retaliate because, you know, we can't add. Our deficit spending makes us their economic slaves. And another significant portion, everything from pirated movie discs to Adidas running shoes to Oreos cookies to Arm & Hatchet baking soda, well, they're just flagrant theft. And that's worth trillions, too, but look, put all of that aside. That's just bitching about a bad call or two or three or a million. The reason that China has surpassed the U.S. economically is pretty simple, really. The socialist Chinese leadership has kept the dictatorial essence of socialism while allowing the Chinese people to embrace a capitalist ethic of hard work and reward for effort. Now, meanwhile, on the other side of the ocean, the American progressives are trying and succeeding in foisting laziness, envy, irresponsibility, government dependency, and sloth, in other words, socialism, on the American people. Record numbers of Americans are on food stamps or unemployment or other forms of taxpayer support. In other words, government-forced redistribution of income at the cost to the country's long-term growth and prosperity, but it's much worse than that. The progressive left has throttled what might have been the most booming economic recovery in American history these last six years through irresponsible fiscal policy, higher taxes, and absurd regulations, mostly regulations advocated by environmental hysterics. And none of them make the slightest lick of sense while doing everything he can to prevent America from cleanly burning the plentiful, inexpensive fossil fuels right beneath our feet. President Obama then turns and sells that coal and oil to China, where it's burned and not very cleanly in the same atmosphere we inhabit to the benefit of the Chinese. My friends, world-dominant militaries depend on world-dominant economies. World-dominant research and innovation depends on the incentive of 
financial reward, and freedom from ridiculous levels of regulation. When guys like Steve Jobs, the founder of the most cash-rich company in the world, says that he could never start Apple in America today, that's not because we've run out of garages or capital or people willing to risk that capital. Virtually all of the great ideas still come from right here in America. But the progressive left, which is significantly too stupid and infinitely too lazy to go out and make their own wealth, taxes and regulates new startups to death to feed a government that costs about $4,000 billion every single year. When you realize that, you begin to realize that these shackles are self-imposed and you begin to realize what we could do if we just release ourselves from these self-imposed chains. It wouldn't just astonish the Chinese or the rest of the world. It would astonish us ourselves. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and be sure to visit us at truthrevolt.org. And to keep these messages coming, please consider making a donation by clicking here.